first attempt to record a podcast. I'm Lori Allen. (laughs) This is so awkward. This is my absolutely first time doing this, sitting here at my kitchen table, um, trying to talk into a microphone. So it's really awkward. I don't know how people do this, honestly. (laughs) So we have been talking about doing this, not for too long, Mm -hmm. but it kind of came up that we wanted to try this. We have a lot of cool projects that we're working on together. We do. And we also just, we have so many of the same interests. We met um, a few months, well, actually about a year ago in, uh, over a year ago in meditation class. I think it was longer than yeah, that. It's I been think almost longer. like two years almost. And we realized at the time, I think that it, we had so much in common and we have so many interesting conversation and don't, conversations and don't really know why we don't record them. So now we're recording them. <laughs> Yeah, and now, like, once we have, like, the thing recording, mm-hmm. like, I feel like I don't know what to talk about. <laughs> but we figured we'll just get started, and eventually we'll try to forget that the microphone's there. Because, like Lori said, like, we've gone on so many rants and talks that we could just sit here for hours and talk about the most random things. So we wanted to record it, because I think it's pretty interesting. We figured there was always going to be somebody out there who figured what we had to say might be at least a little bit interesting to say. <laughs> we do anyway, so yeah, we thought there were more of you out there. Yeah, and a lot of the things we talk about has a lot to do with, like, history and living in New England. As you can tell, Lori is not from New England at I'm a all. transplant. Yeah, it is a transplant. She has some really amazing insight, and we love a lot of the same things, like, cemeteries and spooky things and, and witchy things witchy things and meditation and um yeah so we just kind of wanted to open up this space to bring you guys in the room with us when we talk <laughs> so i guess we could start by kind of introducing ourselves that would probably be a good idea sure. uh, Lori, i'll let you go first maybe talk about like who you are how you ended up here about your oh, gosh life. (laughs) My life has been a series of things falling into my lap. Um, My husband and I moved here from North Carolina in uh, 2000. Well, I can't believe it's been 20 years at this point that we've been living here. And being from the South, I'm from North Carolina originally, we've traveled a lot. But at the same time, my roots are Southern and my accent is Southern. And I get a lot of flack for that a lot of times. Um, I don't know when I'm ever going to be able to say that I'm from Massachusetts because right now, I say that and people go, yeah, right. What's the joke? Where's You'll the get joke? there eventually. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I'm just wondering how many years do I have to be here? But um, I'm really, um, I was a teacher for 20 years and I just uh, in the past few years have uh, opened up my life to things that are a lot, um, a lot more interesting and uh, uh, kind of open I took a trip to India about eight years ago, which changed my life and really helped me kind of uh, grow in my spirituality. And I got into meditation and Buddhism. And um, then I met Sarah (laughs) and we figured that we figured out really quickly that we had a lot of the same interests Mm -hmm. and um, we did a lot of the same things and have a lot of of the same questions about Mm -hmm. life in general. So, yeah, and I'm still not sure how we're not related I think it, we were separated It at still blows my mind. It's crazy. A lot of things that come out of Lori's mouth, I'm like, yeah, yeah. All the time, yeah. <laughs> it's all, we even like the same things. I mean, the same really obscure movies, the same really obscure music. We Tom like Hardy. All, yeah, the same. <laughs> yep, absolutely all the same things. Separated at birth. Mm-hmm. So it was meant to be. It was destiny. So did you say you moved to Belchertown in 2000? I moved to Holyoke. Oh, wow. In 2000, which was a really, really strange um, introduction to Massachusetts. Not that I didn't love it, but, yeah. um, you know, the, <laughs> we lived we lived in Holyoke for about uh, three months, and I was going out to my car to go to my job one morning, and um, I saw a naked man run around the corner of one of the apartment complexes. He looked at me, and he opened his arms, and he said, Mommy! 
Oh, very nice. The police <laughs> following behind him. And at that point, we mm-hmm. kind of knew that we probably needed to move to another part of Massachusetts. Yeah, yeah. It was, Welcome to Western Mass. Well, it wasn't exactly the right spot for us at the time. So <laughs> we decided to change spaces. So yes. we moved to Palmer. And we loved Palmer. And then um, I had one baby there. And we moved to Belchertown. We bought a house in Belchertown. And I had my second baby here. And we've been in Belchertown for 14 years it's just crazy. Nothing like being in the South. <laughs> mm-hmm. Oh, no. Very different. Very, very different. Um, and it's just, uh, I'm, I'm blessed to be here. I really do feel blessed to be here. I feel like this is where I was meant to be in New England, um, in, in this area. I was meant yeah. to be some type of a New England witch. I mm-hmm. think I was reincarnated mm-hmm. at some point as... We all make it back eventually. <laughs> yes, exactly. I feel like I've returned home, and I felt that way from the very beginning. Mm-hmm. So I think sometimes you're more New England than me, and I was born here. <laughs> it has this way of pulling you in, and you don't leave. It does. The traditions, the the fact that I, I mean, I was amazed when I came here of, of how many literary grades there were. Mm-hmm. I mean, I was an English teacher, so yeah. obviously this is mecca for me. This is just you know, this is something I visited the graves of so many great people: Emerson, Thoreau, um, Dickinson. I mean, I, I visited their graves here, mm-hmm. and that's such a huge deal for me because I, I just it makes me feel closer to the writers and the thinkers that I most identify with. So it's been... It's an amazing place. And actually, Emily Dickinson's house isn't too far from where we're at right now. It's in Amherst, and um, visiting her grave is so worth it. It's so it cool. There's this really beautiful gate that surrounds it, and you can... A lot of people, a lot of students, because um, we're around a lot of colleges, leave like poems and really beautiful rocks. It's just the coolest thing. Um, I love going there sometimes, going for a nice walk. Absolutely. It's beautiful there. And Concord the same. I mean, Emerson mm. was the sage of Concord. And you go to his grave on Authors Ridge where he's buried near uh, Louis May Alcott and Thoreau and Hawthorne. And he has this huge granite pink um, tombstone. And people leave apples. Oh, that's so cool. And people leave pencils. Oh. And they leave paper. Um, and it's just a, a really beautiful experience. You feel so connected. I think New England is like that in general. I think you, you just, when you come here, you automatically feel connected to something very old. Oh, 100%. Yeah. It feels like, it's not stagnant energy. That's not what I wanted to say. But it's like, there's this, this historic energy i don't know what that i don't know what that quote's like a deep rooted mm-hmm. um type of feeling it's hard to describe um, unless you've been here but absolutely it's, it's very very cool um it's his, i mean there's you can feel like the history's palpable here mm-hmm. um it's it's just something that you you want to know more about yeah and when you come here it's just an automatic sense of curiosity about about 100%. the people who made this country it's just yeah. it's it's an amazing thing you are in the place where this country was made. And that's just it's fascinating. Actually, I have found out through my husband doing um, Ancestry.com, I found out that I have a relative who came over on the Mayflower. That's so cool. So I heard that you can actually, there's like this exclusive clubby thing Ooh. that goes on where you have to fill out all this paper and there's DNA involved and there's these things and you have to fill it out and then you get to be buried in certain places. You get to go to certain secret it's parties. Like a secret society. It's a secret club. It's a club. I don't know if I would ever go that far as to do something like that. I, I'm not that motivated, but it's still nice to know that you That's have That's so worth looking into, though. Absolutely. Maybe we can talk about that in the future. Maybe we can both do, like, my sister is actually really into, um, actually, a few people in my family on my mom's side are really into doing, like, history of our family and stuff. And the things that they've found out um, is my grandmother was, my great, 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 great grandmother extended is Rebecca Nurse from the Salem Witch Trials. Oh, wow. But I believe there's more um, involved in there, like different historical figures, but we should totally talk about that. I'll get all the info and maybe we can, that'd be so cool to talk about. That's so much more interesting than somebody on the Mayflower because the Puritans kind of scare me a little bit. They're a little frightening. It's a little frightening. I'm even afraid of that big pilgrim hat that they have on the turnpike signs. Oh my God, no. I'm glad they took some of those down. They had like a huge one. Just creeps Once. me out. When I was a kid, I'm like, oh, I don't like that. What a strange. And then you watch movies like, <gasps> like the, the Witch. witch. Oh, yeah. my God. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> you see that? Just how bizarre. Oh, The Witch is one of my favorite movies. But, I, one, I cannot watch it without subtitles because I don't know what the hell they're saying. Yeah, I couldn't imagine living back then. Oh, no. 
I would have been I would have been hung or burned yeah. at a stake or buried alive at, at any given point. We would have been one of the witches in the woods. Yes. yes. <laughs> oh my yeah, I just couldn't imagine living that way and like oh, I just I my favorite part of that movie is Black Phillip. If you haven't seen it, I don't want to do spoilers, but um it involves a witch and a goat and it's pretty great <laughs> it really is good it really is it's like it's almost like watching an M. Night, M. Night Shyamalan movie in a way it's oh 100% like, yeah it's who I also yeah. love by the way very yeah. very much I do love M. Night very much. I know it's kind of weird to say that a lot of people don't like him but I actually really like some of his movies I really I love the surprise that that the end yeah and I don't like it when people spoil it for me and I the sixth sense was spoiled for me and I never oh, will forget movie. and or forgive that person for spoiling it for me but the yeah. sixth sense has one of the scariest um, scenes for me. I don't know why, like that particular scene. Maybe I was younger when I saw it, but there's a scene in the sixth sense where the little boy gets locked inside of. Um, it's almost like this metal door, mm-hmm. and the little kids lock him inside, uh-huh. and he's in the dark, and all of a sudden he starts hearing the the spirits and stuff, and he, the little kids screaming, and that. I've never been able to get out of my head. Sometimes it just pops in my head and I get so freaked out. I'm very claustrophobic. So, oh, so no. Like, I'm imagine sorry. being in a dark place as, like, a little kid and hearing things, like, scream at you in, like, an angry way. Oh. I just couldn't do it. Oh, oh I've been thinking about it now. It's making me nauseous. Now I need to watch The Sixth Sense again. I haven't seen that in ages. It's such a good movie. It's such a good That movie. little kid looks so different now. I know. It's like, amazing. He's been in a bunch of things lately. Mm-hmm. Like, he's in a lot of Kevin Smith movies. Mm-hmm. And he was in something recently, a show I was watching. I'm awful at recalling things. So. That's who we need to get here to do our podcast. That guy? That guy. Haley Joel Osment. Oh my, that's his name, right? I can't believe I just remembered that. That's crazy. I can't remember anything and I just remembered. Yeah, I just, I saw him in a Kevin Smith movie. It, he's just been in a bunch mm-hmm. of things. I think he's, he looks so different. Like, he looks like the same little kid, mm-hmm. but I think he's like a little, like, he gained some weight and mm-hmm. he just looks like, like a little baby man. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <A little> baby. <laughs> no offense to him. I'm sure he's lovely. <laughs> I'm sure he's lovely and we would love to have him here. Absolutely. Yeah, you can totally come. And sit at my and sit yeah. at my dining room table. It's great. I have a Yankee candle burning in the middle, and you know it's just a pleasant little atmosphere. Egg salad there. sandwiches. Egg salad sandwiches. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah, and blueberries mm-hmm. and strawberries and yogurt. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah. Ooh, so tempting. You <laughs> you should totally come to Haley Joel Osment. Come to my house. <laughs> Yes. Oh my God. See, we go off on tangents. Oh so yeah, absolutely. We were talking about. Oh, I wanted to mention the village. Oh. Too. Oh. Okay, so I've heard so many people say they hate that movie because they're like the ending was so predictable. I'm like, how? Am I? What is I missing the mark? How predictable this movie was? I must be totally clueless because that was not at all predictable to me. No, I'm like everybody's like, oh, like I totally guessed that, and Mm -hmm. like so many people hate that movie, and I'm like, just visually. Oh, I'm in love with that movie. That is a stunning movie. Oh, and it yeah. was like that deep yellow. Mm-hmm. Probably the jacket that I'm wearing. It's one of my favorite colors. It was like this like deep... Like a mustardy yeah, kind of... Yeah, yeah. And I just... I need to see that. We should watch some of them and That's then... another one. We really should review... We should have been movie reviewers, honestly. hmm I can't... Well, one, I can't remember actors' names. I can never remember what the movie's about half the mm-hmm. time. That's me. But what I do oh. remember is what the visuals were like. And how I emotionally felt. Oh, yeah. Did I cry? The Did I laugh? I remember, yeah, like, the cinematography. Yeah, cinematography stuff. Like, um, I recently saw Hansel and Gretel, the mm-hmm. new one. And the movie was crap. Mm-hmm. Like, the, 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 the acting was pretty good. But the storyline was awful. It was just, it wasn't that great. But the visuals were so, like, 19, 1970s chic. That's all I really got to say about that movie. That was See, amazing. That's how I feel about Bram Stoker's Dracula. I think that is one of the, well, besides the fact that Gary Oldman was in it. Mm. Oh my goodness. And Keanu Reeves. We won't even talk about Keanu Reeves right now. We'll have to do a whole that's a, podcast with Keanu yeah. Reeves. That, <laughs> that movie was just so stunning. I mean, even you know, even if you don't like that kind of scary mm-hmm. kind of stuff, it was just jaw dropping in terms of the reds. The, the tinted reds and all the different shades of red in the I movie. I need to see that movie again. Oh, I need to see it again. It's been so long. I need to make a list. Yeah. Well, we should totally make a list. And if you guys have any movies you want us to talk about, um, please let us know. Because between the movies. two of us, we've seen everything. With we've the quarantine and everything. Oh, yeah. Name it. Like, right now, I am binging House. 
I'm on, on season three, and I realized there's eight seasons, so I'm pretty happy about that. Uh, what's his name? Um, Hugh. Hugh Laurie. Lo- what a babe. Oh, my God. I, to hear him speak in real life, because he's British, uh, is he's so, so bizarre. He's so... And I saw him recently on an interview with Graham Norton, which is one of my favorite shows. Have I you ever Graham seen... Norton. Oh, yes. my God. I, that's what I've been watching. Like, just YouTube Graham Norton. And, like, it didn't occur to me how long ago that series was filmed. He looks like an old man now. Mm-hmm. He's still gorgeous. But you can tell, like, time has passed. Like, it was 2005. Mm-hmm. When they started recording that, and I'm like, it's still so relevant mm-hmm. even now. Like, it doesn't look like an old show. Like, it literally looks like they just filmed it, and then they'll whip out like an old school um, cell phone. Yep. <laughs> and I'm like, oh yeah, this was this was a long time ago. But it's really cool. I, I love it. I never saw the last couple seasons, so I'm excited to get going with that. See, I've been I've binge watched, and this is really sad because when I binge watch something, I'll binge watch it like three or four times. Mm-hmm. Shit's Creek. Oh, 100%. I have binge watched. I, three I haven't times. seen the last season yet. I'm not gonna say anything don't, to you about don't the last tell season. me. I I'm like scared to watch the last season because I don't want it to end. I, that was me. I sat there and watched it, and I did not <sighs> want it to end. I, I felt like I lost. Friend, I felt like David yeah. died. Oh, oh don't I tell just, me he dies. In no, the no, he doesn't. No, David, no, David does, uh, no, 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 nobody dies. <laughs> All things get wrapped up in a nice, pretty package, which is great. But no, David is my spirit animal. So oh, 100%. I just figured that, you know, I, I, I just felt like I lost him. And then they do the episode after the last episode, which is about. Um, kind of coming together with with uh, all the you know the different characters and the different scenes and the actors and how they felt about certain scenes oh, and so cool. and how um, how David really um, David and Patrick how they really um, led to this awakening with the LGBTQ community and made people mm-hmm. people who weren't aware before so aware and it was just just speaking about their relationships just <laughs> does it for me They're, it's the best relationship it's one of the they actually, I just read today, actually, that they got nominated for the most, like, they hit a record. Oh, of, my. Uh, Was it Grammys? That, Maybe. The Grammys didn't the, come out. Um, or was it the, um, the, the Emmys? The Emmys. Emmys the yeah. TV show people. I'm, I don't. I hardly. <laughs> I never, I never keep track until it's actually the day of it. Yes. And then I'll, like, flip through it and watch it, but. Um, I think I'm going to watch it this time. I think it's going to be interesting. Mm-hmm. I hope they win, like, everything. Cause They're fantastic. What an amazing group of people. If you haven't seen Shit's Creek, and I know people who have said to me, my friends have said to me, I can't get past the first episode because the characters are so unlikable. Like, the whole point of this show is the fact that every single character grows. Mm-hmm. Every character grows exponentially yep. in their character, in, in what they believe in, in their friendships, in their depth. They grow so much, and that's what's so beautiful about this show. So if you haven't watched Shit's Creek, then oh. you should watch it. Do it, it before you have to go back to work. <laughs> absolutely. Watch it three or four times yeah. like me. Be obsessed. It's totally worth it. Oh, my God. What were we talking about before that? <laughs> See, this is what happens. So you introduce yourself. I, that, you haven't introduced yourself. Oh, my you're, goodness. You're Hi. anonymous at this point, Sarah. My name is Sarah. Um, I am from New England. Um, it's so hard to talk about myself. So... Um, I grew up around Boston. Um, I grew up in North Reading, Mass, until I was about 17, which is crazy. Still don't like that place. Probably never will. I still have a lot of family down there, so I'll go back down. But um, my family moved to Brattleboro, Vermont, when I was 17, almost 18. Woohoo! Yay, Vermont. We um, love Vermont. Vermont's great. Brattleboro's not. <laughs> I well, I could do a whole episode about um, the weirdness that is Brattleboro. Oh, Vermont, we could talk forever about I'm the weirdness sh- of Vermont. Oh, oh my God! So, well, well, weird Vermont will be one of the names yes. of one of our. But um, so I moved there. Um, like Lori, I've lived in a lot of places and I've traveled a lot, a lot. Um, I spent a long time traveling. About goodness, off and on. Like I would leave and come back to Brattleboro a lot. Um, and did a lot of things in between. I pretty much have been to every state but two. I feel like I'm just reading fun facts about me. That but you <laughs> so I've been to every state but two. One of the things um, that we've always talked about, though, is that is that we, we're both married. And um, the fact that if we weren't married, we would probably both be in the same commune in, oh, in, in Arizona. Yeah. Yeah. yeah you, we would meet in, like, a weird sweat lodge. <laughs> 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 Licking frogs. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, and actually meeting my husband was one of the best things for me 
it, it really grounded me. Um, <laughs> cause at the time I was literally traveling for like a few years and I was lived out in California and I came back to Brattleboro for like, it was just going to be the summer. Um, a friend of mine passed away. And so I came back for his funeral and I met Carson a couple weeks later. So still here, which is very weird. I usually don't stay in places for very long, but it was worth it. Cause I met Lori in the series of events that followed. I got married. Um, so I also live in Western Mass right now and trying to figure things out. <laughs> um, I know what else? It's so weird talking about myself. Well, I do a lot of things. Yeah, you do a lot of you do, you do a lot of the things. Yeah, I'm an artist, so I ran an art business for a bit, and I also so I run my own business. That could be part of it. I, I wish ran. You, I wish people could see pictures of of your art. I wish people could say this because you you do such beautiful oh, things. Oh, thank you. So I tried to do that as a business full time for a while. And then I decided to kind of switch gears because I realized that I don't like doing commissions. Fun fact. Um, like I do like them like occasionally, but it's hard for me to stay focused on something that isn't interesting to me. So all of these, like, if you know me, you know, I'm always doing something different, but it's mostly just to keep myself stimulated because I get really bored, which we is, are both again. Yeah. Very <laughs> ADD, D, 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 oh, hundred percent. Yes. Yeah. And that's something I've been talking a lot about lately is my, adult ADD it's something that has actually gotten worse over the past couple years um and I'm a huge advocate for therapy which you'll find out so my therapist and I have been working on that and fun fact (laughs) that um it's an issue so it's why Lori and I can talk for so long because we always find something to talk well it's the, the coolest thing I think about knowing and accepting the fact that you know the ADD both of us are in that realm is that I think we've both found really kind of useful and interesting ways to mm-hmm. use that for ourselves. We, we don't look at it as a, as a cross to bear. Mm-mm. It's more of a, almost as a strength point. I mean, it yeah. pushes you. It, ADD has propelled us both forward. Absolutely. We're really good in chaos. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's like we're really good when change needs to happen. This quarantine is yeah. the best thing that ever happened to us. <laughs> you know, like we're really good at, you know, sometimes I do get bored. Mm-hmm. Um okay. And then I emotionally get distressed because I'm bored. And it's not bored because there's nothing to do. It's like my brain needs more. Mm-hmm. So it's kind of like, you know, I was talking with somebody the other day about it kind of being like, I hate to say it this way, kind of like being addicted to drugs almost. Because mm-hmm. like you can take, you know, a drug that stimulates you and you have to kind of keep taking more. Absolutely. So that's what it's kind of like for me when I start a new project and I'm like, I'm like hyper focus and sorry, I just... <laughs> But you have to. I mean, you have to. Oh, my ADD, God, sorry. ADD propels you to be constantly stimulated. Yeah. And it, it really does a lot to get you not focused necessarily, but keeps you moving to propelling yeah. forward. Um, and all those ADD introverts out there, woo! Woohoo! <laughs> it's like I'm, I can be alone for way longer than most people can. Yeah, me too. I, yeah, I'm, I'm, I can stay alone. I'm and be really happy. good. And it's almost, what's the word? Um, I was watching this YouTube channel about this doctor who was talking about how important it is for people to learn how to pivot more than Mm -hmm. ever. And we were talking about this earlier with like kids going back to school, how it's important, like how it's important to learn how to thrive in this uncertainty and learn how to be resilient and learn how to pivot Mm -hmm. when something isn't the way you imagined in your head. Because that's real life. Yeah. And that's real life. And I feel like so many people have a really hard time living that Mm -hmm. way, but people with ADD and stuff. Mm-hmm. I, I think we thrive in it's it. It's kind of our life. We we thrive that mm-hmm. way. I mean, this is this is the ideal environment for the ADD introvert. It's like, oh, I get to stay at home. I oh. get to stay at home and still be ADD and <laughs> Not be, be able to live people. in chaos. <laughs> That's fantastic. I get to go on trips by myself without people, which yeah. is like my favorite thing to do. And it has nothing to do with me not liking people because mm-hmm. it's quite the opposite. As I really enjoy working with people. It's what I do mm-hmm. for a living, but. I love being alone and I love just going on trips by myself so I can like take in the world alone. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Does that make sense? Are you kind of the same way? Oh, yeah. it's, and it's fun. I know when we've been together, you know, going somewhere together, it's, we're both the same. We're both two people who love yeah. to be alone, but don't mind being alone together. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> like we can go off and like go look at something separate yeah. and then come back and yeah, and, like, when I do, like, hang out with people, it's always, like, one or two people. It's mm-hmm. never more than that. And, like, I love, you know, occasionally I love going to, like, parties or, like, mm-hmm. concerts and stuff. But it takes me a while to readjust oh, it's, back. That's, that's me, too. It, it yeah. takes forever. It, like, 
when we went, I was telling we went to New Hampshire this weekend mm-hmm. to Mount Washington. Long trip, long story. But that's a whole episode in itself. But we went up on the Kankamangas Highway, and every place you looked, there was a car pulled over on the side of the road going oh, swimming in the river. Gets me excited. <laughs> it just, I looked at my husband, and I said, this is way too people-y. I can't do it. I can't do it. It just makes me, like, just it almost explode inside. It's almost it's, like, get out of my space. Yeah, it's like, why out. are this these people mine. in my alone time, yes. in my happy time, get it's out? It's offensive. It's yeah. offensive. Absolutely. It's totally offensive. I need to be with me. And, mm-hmm. which is funny because I was in the car with my husband and my son, but that's a whole other yeah. story. I can easily tune them out. Oh, yeah. So it's easy. But, yeah, it's, it's, it's hard for me, too. I have yeah. the same challenges as you. I feel like if I go into a place where there's a lot of people, I just freeze. Mm-hmm. I can't. Even if it's something I'm motivated to do, it still is very hard for me to be in a big group of people. I feel yeah. all that energy, and yeah. it just confuses me. And I get overwhelmed, and, like, yeah. my brain shuts off. Mm-hmm, but too. not always. Sometimes I'm, like, on it. And mm-hmm. I'm, like, when I – like, if I'm going to a party where I don't know anybody, mm-hmm. more when I was younger, but, like, not so much now. I don't go to parties. But I would have to, like, mentally prepare myself. And mm-hmm. if I am, can be in that space and, like, feel balanced and going in, I'm the life of the party. Mm-hmm. Like, I can – I usually can talk to anybody anyway. Oh, yeah, yeah. You're, um, you're good but, that way. <laughs> but I'm like, I feel like I'm like on my game and I can like talk, like interact mm-hmm. with everybody. And then I go home. I usually Irish goodbye. Mm-hmm. I leave. I don't tell anybody I'm leaving. I'll just leave. And the thing about going away, you always have to have your car. I never go with other people. Absolutely. So I can leave whatever time I want. My siblings are like the that best, too. best. Mm-hmm. Uh, the best trick of an introvert is that. Take 100%. your own car wherever you go. Yep. Absolutely. And then we can go home and regroup. And mm-hmm. we need longer to regroup because we're so empathic. And so, like, we take on other people's stuff. I just <laughs> pack everything in. I, I put crystals in my bra. I sage <laughs> before I go. I just, you know, and it still doesn't help. But you know what's funny? Is if I'm talking, if I'm in a crowd of people and I'm talking to people, like if I'm standing on a stage or if I'm, uh, the one presenting something, I have no anxiety at all. Mm-hmm. It's the weirdest thing. Isn't that I can stand and talk in front of people all day long mm-hmm. and not feel the least bit of anxiety. But if I'm in the midst of the crowd, yeah, then it's, I'm all over the place. Oh, that's fascinating. Yeah, it's hit or miss with me. It can go either way. Like, because we, like, Lori and I, um, one of the reasons why we wanted to start this podcast is because we came up with this workshop together because we both are meditation instructors certified meditation instructors and teachers and we came up with this basically a mindfulness workshop that we never had Mm -hmm. like kind of putting together all the things we've learned over the years and trying to put together I mean I know like the chat one of the challenges of meditation and we've talked so much about this yeah is that we're really hard on ourselves Um, when you go to a meditation class and I don't know how many of you have been to a meditation class but they run in several different types and um a lot of times you go in and you're expected to kind of know what to do. And yeah. that isn't always necessarily the case. And you come out of there feeling like a failure because you weren't able to be enlightened and a Buddha at the end of your yeah. 30 minute session. You weren't seeing stars or rainbows. Right. It's and that's not like that. realistic. It's, no. it's not a realistic expectation. And we go into this feeling, these unrealistic expectations. And when we fail, we don't go back. And meditation mm-hmm. can be one of the best forms of relaxation, of clarity, a focus yeah. that you can that you can do. And it's really not as difficult no. as it seems. Yeah. It's and one of the things we say with it, it's for everyone. Mm-hmm. And it you is. just gotta figure out how you want to approach it because mm-hmm. it's so individual. It, it's such an amazing thing, especially for ADD. Mm-hmm. Um, it's been pretty much the number one thing I've used to help Absolutely. me manage it. Um, we developed this class, we've taught it once. Was it just once? I feel like, once. I feel like, like we. I feel like it's like ancient, we've been like talking we've, about it forever. But yeah. the beginning of the year, right? Mm-hmm. This year is crazy. I don't. I don't even know what. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I don't know what's going on. I don't so know at the beginning the of the is. year, we put together this workshop, and it went really well. And we've been wanting to. We did have something else planned that we had to cancel. We had to cancel a few things because of the, you know, the COVID nineteen pandemic going mm-hmm. on right now. But yeah, we just wanted to sit and kind of talk about it instead because mm-hmm. we can't really see you guys in real life. So. <laughs> We figure we can talk about meditation and mindfulness, and actually, one of the names for this podcast we're thinking about is mindful witchery. So we'll see how that goes. Mm-hmm. I really like it, so I think that's what we're going to call it. But we'll see. And we've got so much to 
so much to bring to the table because I think that that over our course, the course of our developing this course and the conversations that we've had, we've figured out that we're not the only people who've struggled in mm-hmm. this area. We're not the only people who've left a meditation class going, oh like, my God, I can't hell? do this again. What was that? Yeah, right. Yeah. And and actually a big part of all of that too is the instructor and how they present mm-hmm. themselves, how important that is because there's a lot of people, oh, we'll talk about this in another oh, yeah. one. That, oh, I can't even get going on this. There's a lot of people in the wellness world that sit up on a pedestal. Mm-hmm. And when you they have teachers... The, they sit in the lotus position oh, on the pedestal. Mm-hmm. Yes. And then, you know, they act like they're these perfect godlike human beings because they work in the wellness world. I'm trying to be really nice here, but... <laughs> and um, they want to make you feel bad. And I don't even want to be negative about that. They want to make you leaving there confused in not knowing what you're doing Mm -hmm. so you'll come back and have more questions and And have more questions and feel confused because it puts them in a position to be holier than Mm -hmm. thou yeah there we go so that's a nutshell of that and a position to make more money yes um so which we are against and it's something we both encountered Mm -hmm. so much but I don't want to sound negative now, so we we'll, just we'll always, get off that. <laughs> I know that we've always just kind yeah. of, you and I, one of the things that connected us early on was that we, we look at meditation as a gift, yeah. as something that's that's helpful to us and that's, that's changed our lives mm-hmm. in a lot of ways. And we want to be able to take what we've learned and give that to other people so they can adapt it to fit them. Mm-hmm. Um, it's not a formula. Meditation isn't formulaic. There's a million no. different types of meditation, and even within that, you can form your own way that it best suits you. Totally. Yeah. And it doesn't, it's not about sitting there for 30 minutes every morning. Mm-hmm. I don't know about you, but I don't have time to sit there for an hour or 30 minutes sometimes. Like, I don't have the attention span. To oh be God, no, no. Yeah. I like once, once other people start waking up in the morning, that's mm-hmm. it for me. So, you know, it could happen while you're doing the dish. That's one of the biggest examples we give is doing the dishes, mm-hmm. even, you know, waking up and putting your feet on the ground while you're eating. There's there's just so many different things. And even riding a bike. I had a conversation oh, yeah. with somebody the other day who's who's a highway cyclist. And they were talking about how that's their form of meditation. How they can focus harder and better in that situation than anywhere else in their life. Oh, that's a cool one. Yeah, yeah exercise. Very cool. Yeah, yeah, and I know when I am exercising in the morning, like I like, I love to dance and lift weights. That's my meditation. Mm -hmm. And once I started making that intention, like this is my meditation time, especially when I'm feeling like super fidgety Mm -hmm. and I just need to move my body, just making that intention, like this is my meditation. This is my mindfulness practice for the day. It makes the world a difference. Mm -hmm. It can turn an awful mood into a much better day. (laughs) And it can be five minutes. Yeah. It can be two minutes. It can be... Well, we've been to those mindfulness retreats. Yeah. It can be uh, six hours. Ten days <laughs> of no talking. With no talking. Yeah. Oh, that yeah. Is... We totally got to talk about that sometime. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's all there's all kinds of ways that a person can meditate. There's, so, you know, we're happy and excited about sharing all of this information with you. And in the midst of that, sharing with you some of our own adventures and some of our uh, quirks and yeah. Yeah. And we can talk about our travels yes, and yeah. whatever you guys want to hear. So when we upload this, um, please let us know what you guys think. And if there's anything specific you guys want to talk about, um, we would love to hear from you guys. But we are going to, I think this is it. We should we should it. end there because we can keep talking. But, Absolutely. Um, and probably will after this is all stopped recording because yeah, we have lots uh-huh. of stuff to talk about. Yep. We might even record that and that will be a whole different <laughs> Um, So thank you guys for tuning in today. Um, Please.